You never saw this one coming. A YouTube Shorts creator making a YouTube video, an actual YouTube video. Really stepping outside of my comfort zone here. But anyways, my dad's birthday was a couple of months ago, and I had to think of a gift to knock his socks off. I thought about buying him a brand spanking new Telecaster, but I just kind of changed my mind with that one. How cool would it be if I surprised my dad with a guitar that he's owned since he was 13 years old? So this right here is our culprit. It's a Vox Superlinks from 1965. One of my favorite parts of this guitar is the fretboard wear. You can really see how much my dad dug into this thing back in the day. You can also see how much it's been neglected. For starters, this thing would not stay in tune at all. And even worse than that, it had circuitry issues. If this thing was going to be playable in time for my dad's birthday, I needed to dig up all of the electronics, clean off all the dirt and gunk, and then I'd have to rewire the thing completely. But like I said, surprising my dad with this guitar would be something legendary. It would be freaking cool. So I started rewiring and sucking off the old solder with this old blue sucky thing. The fear of presenting this guitar to my dad in front of all my family and friends gave me just enough anxiety to make this job as thorough as possible. And honestly, this process reminded me of when I first picked up the guitar. I'd practice for hours a day, happily sitting inside of my comfort zone. As soon as I started to branch out and learn different genres, my chops grew astronomically. But stepping outside of your comfort zone is no easy task. For example, when this wire slipped out of my hands. No, fuck. That was such a shot in the heart. I freaking had it right there. Shoot. But just keep pushing and you'll marvel at the results. So I just spent the better half of an hour redoing the solder. I think it'll work. <sighs> yes! Oh my god! Let's go! The sheer euphoria oh I experienced god. was just... Yes! Yes! Oh. It was around this time when I figured out my first clue as to where this guitar came from. It was all because of this thin lettering on the headstock that read Made in Italy. After some research, I found out there was only one Vox plant to ever exist in Italy, and it existed from the years 1965 to 1966. There wasn't a doubt in my mind that this Italy plant was where my dad's guitar was born. And the plant has some interesting history. They made guitars for the Beatles, the Rolling Stones. One worker even recalls building a guitar for Prince Charles. And while this was cute and all, I had a huge problem on my hands. To study for this upcoming project, I watched hundreds of videos of players placing pickups in their Gibson 335. And in every video, each guitar player put all the parts in a neat little slab of cardboard. I had all the parts unscrewed and disorganized. Volume, volume, tone, tone. This is neck. I had no choice but to outsource it for $70. Words can't describe how happy I am right now to see these knobs in there. Since the parts are so vintage and fragile, there is a chance that the luthier ripped everything out. I could only test this later on when it was time to put on the strings. I had to keep moving because next I was faced with 60 years of grit, grime, and gunk all stuck and caked on the body. I spent a few hours using fine steel wool to clean up the guitar neck and I got it looking good. The headstock was looking dusty, the lettering especially bleak. Once I was ready to clean the guitar body, I hesitated. <laughs> that was the sound you all made last time I tried to clean a guitar with lemon oil. Apparently mineral oil works best for this type of job. For the sole purpose of shininess, I concocted a brew of white vinegar, baking soda, and curry powder. Gotta clean this bridge plate off. The curry powder was a stretch, but after a 24 hour soak in this stuff, they were looking glorious. Boom. The body cleaned up perfectly, and I personally enjoy this part the most, so on to the next part, I guess. 1960s glisten. You might have noticed the missing tuner on the headstock. My only option was to scrap a tuner that looked the part. At first, I nearly tore my hand off just trying to remove these things. You know what, never mind, this one's being tough. And when the tuner did pop off, for the life of me, I couldn't get the thing to stick. I guess I should learn how to use epoxy for the next time. At this point, my dad's party was closed. I mean, it was like the doomsday clock in my studio. Piece of the guitar back together. Ah, piece of the 
piecing it back together. My first order of business was to see if the luthier screwed up all of my hard work when he reinstalled the electronics from earlier. But now it's the moment of truth. I plugged in the guitar with sweaty palms. It works! It fucking works! I don't know how that worked. There was no time to question any of this because my dad's party was here. On the day of the party, I frantically tried to get the replacement tuner from earlier to fit. And by another miracle, that worked too. So at my dad's party, he put on a nice performance for all the party goers. But when my dad performs, he's like tunnel vision. <laughs> he is in the zone. So when I actually showed him the guitar in front of all these people, I don't think he could properly process. Respect, this is a Super Links box from 1965. Oh. This is great. It's only until after the party, he gave me a call. And it's like, when the party was over, he sat down with the guitar and had a, a moment. He realized he could once again play the guitar that started it all. The day of his actual birthday, we had a tight family party, you know, just the family. Using his childhood guitar and this new amp, he put on one of the most heartfelt performances. He brought my older brother up and they sang old Italian tunes. That day was powerful. 